The year is 1916. The United States is on the verge of entering the Great War, a conflict that will reshape the world. Yet, amidst the uncertainty, one name resonates with power and influence like no other, John D. Rockefeller. In an era defined by industrial titans, Rockefeller stands apart as a colossus, a figure whose ambition and business acumen would not only build an empire, but redefine the very fabric of American capitalism. This is the story of the world's first billionaire, a man who rose from humble beginnings to amass a fortune unparalleled in his time. Rockefeller's company, Standard Oil, quickly emerged as a force to be reckoned with. Through a combination of shrewd acquisitions, relentless efficiency, and innovative business practices, Standard Oil began to swallow up its competitors. Rockefeller understood that scale was key in the nascent oil industry. By controlling the lion's share of refining capacity, he could dictate prices, secure favorable transportation rates, and ultimately squeeze out his rivals. His tactics, while undeniably effective, drew the ire of competitors and the scrutiny of lawmakers. Critics accused him of predatory pricing, unfair business practices, and wielding monopolistic power to crush competition. The image of Standard Oil as a ruthless octopus, its tentacles reaching into every corner of American industry and government, took hold in the public imagination. Newspapers ran scathing exposes, politicians called for investigations, and public sentiment turned against the oil giant and its enigmatic leader. Yet, Rockefeller remained undeterred. He saw his actions not as ruthless, but as necessary steps in building a more efficient and profitable industry. He argued that his methods ultimately benefited consumers by providing a reliable supply of affordable kerosene, the lifeblood of illumination in an era before electricity reached every home. And indeed, under Standard Oil's reign, the price of kerosene plummeted, making it accessible to millions of Americans. However, the public's perception of Rockefeller as a robber baron, a ruthless capitalist who amassed his fortune at the expense of the common man, began to solidify. Despite his philanthropic efforts, which would later grow to encompass vast sums donated to education, medicine, and scientific research, Rockefeller struggled to shake off this image. The legal battles raged on, culminating in a landmark 1911 Supreme Court decision that found Standard Oil in violation of antitrust laws and ordered its breakup into 34 separate companies. The dismantling of Standard Oil, however, did little to diminish Rockefeller's immense wealth. The breakup, ironically, resulted in a surge in the value of his holdings, making him the world's first billionaire and solidifying his status as one of the most powerful men of his era. His influence, however, extended far beyond his vast fortune. Rockefeller's unwavering pursuit of efficiency his relentless focus on cost-cutting, and his innovative business practices left an indelible mark on American industry. His legacy is one of immense complexity, a tapestry woven from threads of ambition, ruthlessness, innovation, and philanthropy. He was a man who could be both admired and reviled, a figure who embodied both the boundless possibilities and the inherent contradictions of American capitalism. In the annals of history, John D. Rockefeller's name is forever etched alongside the rise of big business, a testament to the transformative power and the enduring consequences of unbridled ambition. John Davison Rockefeller was born in 1839 in Richford, New York, a small town nestled in farm country. The Rockefellers were not impoverished, but their life was far from privileged. His father, William Avery Rockefeller, was a traveling salesman, a charismatic but somewhat shady figure. His mother, Eliza Davison Rockefeller, was a pillar of devout Baptist faith and strict discipline. From a young age, John D. displayed a keen mind for numbers and a natural aptitude for business. He kept meticulous records of his earnings from odd jobs, even charging his siblings interest on small loans. At 16, after high school,
John D. faced a pivotal decision. College seemed a distant dream. Armed with ambition and a keen sense of opportunity, John D. Rockefeller set out to make his mark. In 1853, 16-year-old John D. Rockefeller arrived in Cleveland, Ohio, a burgeoning hub on Lake Erie. The city pulsed with the energy of westward expansion. After studying bookkeeping at Folsom's Commercial College, Rockefeller became an assistant bookkeeper at Hewitt & Tuttle. He quickly earned a reputation for his meticulous attention to detail. John D. thrived, absorbing the intricacies of commodity trading. He observed the burgeoning industries, he had particularly railroads and oil fields. In 1859, Edwin Drake's successful oil well in Pennsylvania ignited an oil rush. The oil industry was chaotic and ripe for disruption. Rockefeller, with his ambition and business acumen, was ready to seize the moment. The discovery of oil in Pennsylvania was a watershed moment for the world. Kerosene quickly became a highly sought-after commodity. The demand for black gold exploded, sparking a frenzy of drilling. Fortunes were made and lost overnight as prospectors flocked to the oil fields. Rockefeller recognized the immense potential and volatility of this new market. He understood the real money lay in refining crude oil into kerosene. Refining was complex but key to controlling this valuable commodity. Rockefeller aimed to dominate the refining sector. In 1863, Rockefeller invested in a small oil refinery in Cleveland. Partnering with Clark and Andrews, they formed Rockefeller and Andrews. This partnership laid the foundation for his future empire. Cleveland, with its strategic location on Lake Erie and its growing network of railroads, proved to be the ideal base of operations for Rockefeller's burgeoning oil empire. The city was a hub of commerce and industry, a melting pot of entrepreneurs, inventors, and laborers drawn by the promise of opportunity. Rockefeller, with his sharp mind for business and his unwavering ambition, thrived in this competitive environment. In 1870, Rockefeller and his associates, including his brother William, Henry Flagler, and Samuel Andrews, formally incorporated Standard Oil of Ohio. The company quickly established itself as a major player in the refining sector, rapidly expanding its capacity and market share. Rockefeller's strategy was two-pronged, ruthless efficiency and aggressive expansion. He invested heavily in new technologies, streamlining the refining process, and squeezing every drop of profit from each barrel of crude. At the same time, he embarked on a series of strategic acquisitions, buying out competitors, often at bargain prices, and consolidating his control over the industry. Rockefeller's tactics, while undeniably effective, were not without controversy. He was a shrewd and often ruthless negotiator, driving hard bargains and exploiting weaknesses in his rivals. He forged alliances with railroads, securing preferential shipping rates that gave him a significant competitive advantage. His critics accused him of predatory pricing, using his growing market power to undercut competitors and drive them out of business. Yet Rockefeller remained undeterred, his sights fixed on a grander vision, the creation of a vertically integrated oil monopoly that would dominate the industry for decades to come. The 1870s witnessed the meteoric rise of Standard Oil, transforming it into a national powerhouse. John D. Rockefeller orchestrated bold moves that consolidated the company's dominance. He controlled the entire supply chain, from oil fields to consumers, Rockefeller secured preferential shipping rates, crippling competitors. He formed alliances with refiners, creating a network of loyal partners. Investing in pipelines, he bypassed railroads, tightening control. By the decade's end, Standard Oil controlled 90% of refining capacity. This rapid expansion came at a cost. Competitors accused Rockefeller of unfair practices and predatory pricing. They claimed he sabotaged shipments and manipulated crude oil prices. Newspapers portrayed Rockefeller as a ruthless robber baron. Undeterred, Rockefeller aimed to create a vertically integrated oil monopoly. He saw his methods as necessary to bring order to the industry. Standard Oil provided reliable, affordable kerosene. In 1882, Rockefeller created the Standard Oil Trust. This structure centralized control under a board of trustees with Rockefeller as chairman. The trust allowed Rockefeller to streamline operations and control the industry. 
The formation of the Standard Oil Trust marked a turning point in American business history. It ignited a firestorm of debate over corporate power. The trust became a lightning rod for criticism, symbolizing wealth concentration. Critics argued it stifled competition and exploited workers. They pointed to its ruthless tactics and monopolistic power. Reformers demanded antitrust legislation to curb its power. Rockefeller argued it was a natural evolution of the free market. He insisted Standard Oil's success was due to superior management and innovation. As the 19th century drew to a close, Standard Oil faced mounting challenges on multiple fronts. Public outrage over the trust's power grew, fueled by muckraking journalists exposing its questionable practices. Labor unrest led to strikes and protests at its refineries. Ida Tarbell, a journalist, published scathing articles in McClure's magazine documenting Standard Oil's predatory pricing and political manipulation. Her expose galvanized public opinion against the trust. The federal government, under President Theodore Roosevelt, launched an antitrust lawsuit against Standard Oil in 1906. The antitrust lawsuit against Standard Oil became a media spectacle, turning John D. Rockefeller into a controversial figure. Newspapers depicted Rockefeller as a ruthless tycoon, a symbol of corporate greed. Despite negative publicity, Rockefeller remained defiant, relying on his lawyers and publicists. He argued that Standard Oil operated within the law and its success was due to efficiency and innovation. In 1911, the Supreme Court ruled against Standard Oil ordering its breakup into 34 separate companies. This decision marked a turning point in American antitrust law. The dismantling of Standard Oil did little to diminish John D. Rockefeller's personal fortune. Ironically, the breakup resulted in a surge in the value of his holdings. Rockefeller became the world's first billionaire, he gradually withdrew from the oil industry, focusing on managing his wealth and philanthropy. Rockefeller's legacy remains a subject of debate, as he was both a visionary entrepreneur and a symbol of corporate greed. His impact on the American economy and the oil industry is undeniable. By the dawn of the 20th century, John D. Rockefeller had reached the pinnacle of American business. Standard Oil controlled nearly 90% of the nation's oil refining capacity. Yet this immense power came at a steep price, with methods now being scrutinized and condemned. Small, independent oil producers were squeezed out of the market. Investigative journalists, or muckrakers, exposed the darker side of American capitalism. Public awareness of Standard Oil's tactics grew, leading to calls for government intervention. The public's perception of John D. Rockefeller underwent a dramatic transformation in the early 1900s. Once hailed as a self-made man, he was increasingly portrayed as a ruthless manipulator. Muckraker's exposés painted a damning picture of Standard Oil's business practices. Even Rockefeller's philanthropy was viewed with suspicion. He began to grant interviews, defending his business practices, and attempting to present a more benevolent image. However, these efforts often backfired, coming across as tone deaf and out of touch. Ida Tarbell, a pioneering investigative journalist, emerged as one of Standard Oil's most formidable adversaries. Her expose of Standard Oil's rise to power was driven by a personal vendetta against Rockefeller. Tarbell's articles exposed the company's ruthless tactics in shocking detail. Her work resonated with a public wary of corporate power, sparking outrage and demands for government action. Tarbell's legacy extends far beyond her takedown of Standard Oil, inspiring a generation of investigative journalists. Her work helped usher in an era of greater corporate accountability and landmark antitrust legislation. The Sherman Antitrust Act, 
passed in 1890, marked a turning point in American law. It asserted the federal government's authority to regulate corporations and prevent monopolies. The act was a response to the rise of giant trusts like Standard Oil. Initially, the Sherman Act had limited success in curbing the power of trusts. Under President Theodore Roosevelt, the Department of Justice launched a full-scale antitrust investigation into Standard Oil in 1906. This set the stage for a legal battle that would reshape the relationship between corporations and the government. The antitrust trial of Standard Oil, which began in 1906, captivated the nation. The government accused Standard Oil of violating the Sherman Act by monopolizing the oil industry. The trial was a media spectacle with daily coverage and public interest. The government presented a compelling case detailing Standard Oil's anti-competitive practices. Standard Oil's lawyers argued that the company's success was due to efficiency and innovation. The case ultimately hinged on the interpretation of the Sherman Act's prohibition against restraint of trade. The Gospel of Wealth. John D. Rockefeller's later years saw a shift in focus. He stepped back from the oil industry, burdened by his immense wealth. Raised Baptist, he struggled with the moral implications of his fortune. This led him to philanthropy. He believed wealth carried a moral obligation to benefit humanity. Embracing Carnegie's Gospel of Wealth, he saw philanthropy as an investment in the future. He donated to hospitals, orphanages, and schools. Rockefeller aimed to address the root causes of poverty and disease. He ensured his philanthropy had a lasting impact. A Legacy in Education Education was a cornerstone of Rockefeller's philanthropy. He believed knowledge unlocked human potential and invested in quality education. He created opportunities for others, investing heavily in educational institutions. In 1901, he founded the Rockefeller Institute for Medical Research. The Institute advanced medical knowledge and found cures for diseases. Rockefeller's support extended beyond medicine. He was a major benefactor of Spelman College. His contributions established Spelman as a leading institution for black women. In 1913, he established the Rockefeller Foundation. The foundation promoted global well-being, addressing poverty, disease, and ignorance. Rockefeller's fascination with science and his deep-seated belief in its potential to alleviate human suffering led him to become a major patron of medical research. He saw disease not as an inevitability, but as a challenge to be overcome through scientific inquiry and innovation. His investments in medical research, channeled through the Rockefeller Institute for Medical Research and later the Rockefeller Foundation, would revolutionize the field of medicine and lead to breakthroughs that would save countless lives. One of Rockefeller's most significant contributions to public health was his support for the eradication of hookworm, a debilitating parasitic disease that plagued the American South in the early 20th century. Hookworm infection, which caused anemia, stunted growth, and widespread misery, was particularly prevalent among impoverished rural communities, hindering economic development and perpetuating cycles of poverty. Rockefeller, recognizing the devastating impact of the disease, established the Rockefeller Sanitary Commission in 1909, which launched a massive public health campaign to eradicate hookworm from the South. The commission, led by a team of dedicated doctors and public health officials, implemented a multi-pronged strategy that included mass drug administration, public education campaigns to promote hygiene and sanitation, and the construction of latrines to prevent the spread of the parasite. The Commission's efforts were remarkably successful, dramatically reducing the incidence of hookworm infection in the South and improving the health and economic prospects of millions of people. Rockefeller's support for medical research extended far beyond hookworm eradication. He funded research on a wide range of diseases, including yellow fever, malaria, tuberculosis, and influenza. 
His investments supported the development of new vaccines, antibiotics, and other life-saving medical interventions. The Rockefeller Foundation, under his guidance, established a global health program that played a pivotal role in controlling and eradicating diseases in developing countries around the world. John D. Rockefeller's foray into philanthropy, though undeniably transformative, was not without its complexities and contradictions. The very fortune he dedicated to improving humanity had been amassed through business practices that many considered ruthless and monopolistic. His critics argued that his philanthropy, however well-intentioned, could not erase the harm inflicted by Standard Oil's predatory tactics, which had driven competitors out of business, exploited workers, and stifled competition. They saw his charitable giving as an attempt to whitewash his reputation and deflect attention from the less savory aspects of his business dealings. Moreover, Rockefeller's approach to philanthropy, while groundbreaking in its strategic focus and reliance on expert advice, was often criticized as paternalistic and lacking in accountability. He believed that he, along with his team of advisors, knew what was best for society and that his vast wealth entitled him to dictate the terms of his giving. He was often reluctant to fund projects or organizations that did not align with his own vision or that challenged the existing social order. This top-down approach, while effective in some instances, also raised concerns about transparency, community involvement, and the potential for unintended consequences. The debate over John D. Rockefeller's legacy as a robber baron who amassed a fortune through questionable means or as a captain of industry who used his wealth to improve the world, continues to this day. His story highlights the complexities of philanthropy, particularly when it stems from wealth generated through controversial business practices. It raises enduring questions about the relationship between wealth and power, the role of corporations in society, and the responsibility of the wealthy to address social problems. Rockefeller's life and legacy serve as a reminder that even the most well-intentioned philanthropy cannot fully erase the past or absolve individuals from the consequences of their actions. The Paradox of Philanthropy, a tale of wealth, power, and the enduring complexities of giving. John D. Rockefeller's life story is a study in contrasts, a testament to the complexities of ambition, wealth, and legacy. He built an empire on oil, crushed rivals, and amassed a fortune unparalleled in his time. Yet, he was a devout Baptist, a family man, and a philanthropist who dedicated millions to education, medicine, and scientific research. This duality lies at the heart of the Rockefeller paradox. Some remember him as a robber baron, a symbol of corporate greed. Others hail him as a visionary entrepreneur who revolutionized the oil business and fueled the American economy. The truth lies somewhere in between. His tactics left a trail of broken businesses and embittered rivals. Yet, his philanthropy continues to shape our world, saving lives and advancing knowledge. John D. Rockefeller's legacy is not easily categorized. He was a product of his time, a time of rapid industrialization and fierce competition. His story continues to resonate today, offering lessons about ambition and responsibility. How can we reconcile the pursuit of profit with social responsibility? Rockefeller's belief in education and innovation inspires philanthropists today. The story of John D. Rockefeller is a story of contradictions, triumphs, and failures.